Good morning and welcome to Morning Worship on this Wednesday the 2nd of March. My name is Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St Peter's Ipsley in Redditch and it's really great that you could join me with me this morning and share worship. Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent and Lent is a time of self-reflection where we confess our failings and Resolve to live a more godly life based on the teachings of Christ. So the readings will be a little different for today as it is Ash Wednesday. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will. That the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is Psalm 38, and it is a Psalm of David, and it is a Psalm of Petition. So that's Psalm 38. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath, for your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down upon me. Because of your wrath, there is no health in my body. My bones have no soundness because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, O Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pounds. My strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbours stay far away. Those who seek my life set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin. All day long they plot deception. I am like a deaf man who cannot hear, like a mute who cannot open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, whose mouth can offer no reply. I wait for you, O Lord. You will answer, O Lord my God. For I said, do not let them gloat or exalt themselves over me when my foot slips. For I'm about to fall and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. Many are those whom are my vigorous enemies. 
Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay my good with evil slander me when I pursue what is good. O oh Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, O oh Lord, my Saviour. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we're going straight into our second reading, which is Daniel 9, verses 3 to 6, and then verses 17 to 19. So that's Daniel 9, starting with 3 to 6. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. O oh Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. On to verse 17. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favour on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because you are righteous, but because of your great mercy. O oh Lord, listen. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hear and act. For your sake, O oh my God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, both of these readings, which are lectionary readings for Ash Wednesday, are confessions of sin. Daniel, in the second reading, makes a humble, serious, devout address to God, a penitent confession of sin. The sin which was the cause of the troubles that the people for so many years had groaned under. All who would find mercy must thus confess their sins. And Dan Daniel ends his urgent prayer with, O oh Lord, listen. O oh Lord, forgive. Do not delay. And there is an urgency in this prayer. But Psalm 38 is a psalm of David. And the whole psalm seems to be a prayer of an afflicted sinner. Metaphors are used to describe this sin and the effects that it has on David. There is no health in my body. My bones have no soundness because of my sin. David used descriptions like these, possibly to make his sin more visible and tangible and help recognise the impact that it had on him. And it is very descriptive to speak of sin as a sickness that robs the body of health and wholesomeness. The sin that gets deep inside us, penetrating even to the bone. If we're not careful, making itself 
at home in our very beings. Although today, I don't think we speak so graphically about sin, we tend to analyse it and even to explain it away. We see ourselves more as victims than as sinners, as wounded, misunderstood, nice people who are doing the best we can. Perhaps thinking that we don't actually sin, we just make mistakes. But that's certainly not the way that David the psalmist saw it. He makes no excuses and seeks no place to hide. He knows that sin has taken up residence inside him. The evidence of sin's effects is all around him. His body is failing. His mind is troubled. His spirit is in turmoil. And in addition to this misery, David is afflicted from without. Enemies set traps and lie in wait, and his friends and neighbours shun him. All this the psalmist sees as God's punishment, but he sees the punishment as flowing directly from his own actions. David knows that he is one that has caused this through the consequences of his own free choices. But do not let us forget that the Psalms are prayers, not the rantings of hopeless sinners. They are prayers. And the psalmist has raised his arms, hands in surrender because he lacks a remedy for all of his ills. He has no excuses and can make no self-defence. So he turns to the only place he can, the merciful God, to whom he can say in confidence, do not forsake me, help me, my Lord and my salvation. And you know, the goodness of God shines all the brighter when Human frailty is not hidden, but openly admitted. It's when we face the darkness of our sin that the light of God's merciful love shines brightest. Now, I'd like to share a poem with you, if I may. Um, and the history behind it is on meeting with the baptism family on Saturday, they asked may they have a poem read. And I sort of said, well, can you send it to me to see if it's appropriate, etc." And when they sent it to me, it was so appropriate that I'd like to share it with you. It was written by Philip, Dad's mother, Lorraine Susan Guest, um, about two years ago, just before she died. And I have Philip's permission to share this poem with you that his mother wrote while she was speaking to Jesus. And it's called Snow. Sitting on my favourite seat where I would talk and share my heart with my Jesus. I said to Adrian, has it started to snow? Just watch all of the rubbish that has not been cleared and spoiling our beautiful garden. Then it snowed, it snowed and it snowed. And I asked, now what do you see? He said, just pure white snow. I looked in his aisle, eyes and smiled and said, that's what God's love does covering a multitude of sins until all you see is a pure white covering. Oh, I do love snow. So let's pray. And the special collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made 
and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray for the worldwide church and for all Christian communities everywhere. For those who will reflect and self-examine their ways during this time of Lent, that you will listen, Lord, to our pleas. O oh Lord, the house of our souls is narrow, enlarging it so that you may enter in. It is ruinous, O oh Lord, repair it. It displeases your sight. We confess it, we know, but who shall cleanse it? To whom shall we cry but to you? Cleanse us from our secret faults, O oh Lord and spare your servants from strange sins. And today in the diocesan diary, we pray, Almighty God, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all those people in the world who suffer. And today we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those who live in fear that you may grant them peace. We pray that the voices for discernment and peaceful solutions may prosper. Lord, we ask that you raise up peacemakers on all sides, that war and violence might cease. Give diplomats wisdom and understanding. And we ask that the church in the nations involved may be salt and light in a dark situation. Lord, we lift this dangerous situation to you. And Lord, we pray too for countries where justice seems far away, where human rights are ignored, where prisoners are forgotten. We pray that the dignity of life is respected and remember those who have lost that dignity through age or infirmity, or neglect. We uphold to you all who suffer from intolerance and hate. May we act to challenge injustice and seek to affirm your love for all mankind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those whose life is a daily routine of pain and suffering, for those who suffer illness at home or in hospital, for those not able to enjoy life fully due to disability. And we pray for all those for whom we pray, those known to us who need your help at this time. Those people who are mentioned in the church weekly newsletter, The Catch. For those with no one to pray for them. We pray that all who suffer may find your presence near to them, that they may experience your comforting, loving 
a warm embrace. And we pray for those who mourn. Look with compassion, Lord, on those who grieve for the loss of one dear to them. May they know your presence even in the darkness of times. May they find in you courage, comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord fill our lives with peace. May the Lord fill our hearts with love. May the Lord fill our minds with light. And may the Lord bless us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with me this morning. And I hope that you may be able to join me tomorrow when the readings will be Psalm 77 and Genesis 39, Joseph and Potiphar's wife. So I hope to see you all soon. Bye for now.